I will go over everything from setup of the Phantom, the H3 3D gimbal, Phantom 2 Assistant, prop guard, calibration, NASA M mode, course lock, home lock, tips, some crashes, and what I've learned in the first few weeks of owning a Phantom. All right, I lied. This may not be a complete overview, but it's everything I wish I would have seen compiled into one video before I set up and flew for the first time. That's why I say almost complete review because I'm new to flying, so I want to hear your tips and suggestions. Also, if you scan this barcode before you make a purchase, you're going to get reward points, and so will I. So that's a win-win situation. First, let's look at the hardware that comes out of the box. You should have the Phantom 2, a battery and a charger, eight propellers, four black and four silver, a USB cable, and a couple of wrenches. Charging the battery is simple. Just open the protective cover on the charger and insert it into the battery. When the battery is powered off, pressing the battery button once will indicate the current battery level. Here are the different battery charge levels. When you install the battery, make sure you hear a click to ensure that it is secure in the Phantom. I took a Sharpie to the ones with black to make them stand out a little bit more. When installing the propellers, you're going to want to place the black tipped propellers on the screw that has a black dot on it. Silver tipped propellers on the screws that do not have the black dot marking. Install the black tipped propellers by spinning them counterclockwise and the silver by spinning them clockwise. Next, let's install the propeller guards. I painted mine green and red. Customize yours however you like because it helps you determine which direction is which when flying. You're going to want to take note of the symbol as it indicates the directions you should turn the propellers to remove them. You can remove them by using the supplied wrench or just by grabbing with your fingers like this. I suggest that if you do this, you do it when the phantom power is off. Locate the 10 meters of string that came with your prop guards and tie a piece of string in both eyelets. You'll see why later. As I found out the hard way, on my second crash. I thought that the directions that came with the remote were very helpful. So I used a label maker and I printed off what it indicated. I might not need this in the future, but if I want to let a friend fly this, it gives me a peace of mind. Important. When using the Phantom 2, startup sequence should always be the remote control and then the Phantom. And to turn it off, you turn off the Phantom first and then the remote control. So just think. Remote, Phantom, Phantom, Remote. Before you turn on the remote control, make sure that switch 1 and 2 are in the upright position, and then go ahead and switch it on. Turn on the Phantom by pressing the button in the back of the battery once, letting go, and then holding down for 2 seconds. You will now hear the sound it makes during startup as it goes through the power on self-test. Now we need to calibrate the Phantom, so move switch 1 all the way up and down at least 6 times. The blinking yellow lights on your Phantom should turn to a solid yellow color. Rotate the aircraft 360 degrees horizontally until the LED flight indicator turns green. Once it does, rotate the aircraft vertically or nose downward and do a 360 degree rotation. Successful calibration should make the green lights flicker, go to a solid green, and once you have acquired six or more satellites, blink a constant green. To start your Phantom, move both of the sticks to either of these two positions and you are now ready to fly. Now we will go over the H3 3D gimbal installation. The gimbal comes with extra vibration absorbers, but I chose to use the white ones and have been happy with using those. You can either attach the anti-interference enhancement board to the bottom of the Phantom 2 or install it inside the Phantom 2 housing. Plug the 8-pin cable from the Phantom 2 to the Phantom 2 port on the anti-interference enhancement board. Make sure the connector goes in straight so you avoid bending any pins. First, insert the securing pins through the holes on the highlighted diagonal positions shown here. Then attach and secure the upper plate of the dampening unit to the Phantom 2 airframe with four M 3x5 screws. Attach the bottom plate of the dampening unit to the upper plate of the dampening unit through the four vibration absorbers. Be sure that the lip of the vibration absorbers are properly inserted through the mounting holes. Next, you'll insert the securing washers into the securing pins to lock the dampening unit. That is the recommended install by DJI, but what I noticed is that this prevents the gimbal from getting a full rotation, or at least uh, a full 180 degree rotation. So what I did 
is I found some black cable ties and I made my own. I've flown the Phantom without the securing pins, with the securing pins, and with the cable ties, and I can't tell a difference. All I know is that with the cable ties, it gives it the full rotation that the gimbal can go. As you can see here, the gimbal has the full rotation without hitting a securing pin or anything else. Next, install the 8-pin cable from the Phantom 2 port to the H3 3D port. Mount the camera onto the gimbal and secure the camera with a camera bracket by using two M 2.5 by 6.3 screws. Firmly insert the video output board connector into the mini USB port on the camera to complete. That completes the installation, so go ahead and turn your Phantom on. Now let's talk about firmware updates, calibration, NASA M mode using the Phantom 2 Assistant. To download the software, head to DJI's site at www.dji.com. This will be done on a Mac, so open up your applications and open up the Phantom 2 Assistant. This is the first window you will be greeted by, and if your Phantom is not on, go ahead and press the skip button. Turn on your remote, and then turn on the Phantom. Grab your USB cable that's provided, and plug it into the Phantom, and then into your computer. When you plug the Phantom into your computer, the light should turn to a green and a blinking blue light. The first tab is View, and this will give you a general overview of your Phantom. The second tab is Basic, and here you will do your calibration as well as be able to adjust your gain. In the Advanced tab, you have three tabs of Battery, Gimbal, and Limits. Under the battery section here, it will give you all the information about your battery and allow you to adjust the battery level warning thresholds. Under the Gimbal tab, you can adjust the settings of the gimbal. I love to adjust the tilt control gain to very low, one or two, maybe three. That way it gives you a very slow, steady pan up and down rather than a very quick one, and it makes the footage look much better. Under the Limits tab, you can look at adjusting your flight limits. Under the Tools tab, you have IMU calibration and some other settings that you can adjust. Unless you know what you're doing, I would just leave this basic. The Upgrade tab is laid out pretty nice. It lists the name, the loader, the manufacturer ID, the firmware, and whether or not there is an upgrade available, and if you have the latest version. I suggest that you upgrade your equipment to the latest version. I upgraded my equipment to the latest version, and here are some screenshots of what it looked like. The last tab is information, which just gives you some general information. For calibration, open the basic tab and make sure that the RC tab is open. Under the command stick calibration, you're going to want to press the start button. After moving your sticks all around in every direction, you're going to want to hit finish. They should all four be aligned in the middle and green. Go ahead and press OK if this dialog box appears. To calibrate the gimbal, you're going to use the X1 calibration setting. Hit start, move it back and forth, try to get it close to the middle, and hit finish. Now let's discuss NASA M mode. By default, mine is in a Phantom mode. In order to enable NASA M mode, you're going to click the Phantom button. When you click on the Phantom button to enable the NASA M mode, this dialog box will appear warning you not to do this until you have completed advanced flight maneuvers and blah 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 blah. That very well may be true, but since I turned on NASA M mode, I don't think I will ever turn it off. The reason I say that is because when you're flying the Phantom at a distance, it can be very hard to tell which way you're facing. So being able to enable home lock is an amazing thing. Go ahead and press yes. When you do, another dialog box will appear and go ahead and hit yes again. When you do, it will inform you that the NASA M mode is working and functional. You'll also notice at the top that instead of saying Phantom, it now says NASA M. You can undo this process by just clicking the NASA M mode and it will bring you right back to Phantom mode. Now that you've enabled NASA M mode, click on the Advanced tab. You'll notice a few more tabs here, FS and IOC. Under Failsafe settings, you can choose to enable to land the Phantom or go home and then land the Phantom in the case that signal loss happens. The next tab is IOC or Intelligent Orientation Control. You need to click the box to enable it, and then on switch 2, you can go from off to course lock and home lock and see it changing here 
on the screen. Now for some fun stuff, the crashes and tips. The reason I crashed here is because I was pretty high up in the air and I was coming down too quick. So the tip is, when you're really high in the air, don't hold the stick down too fast. Rather, ease it down. This crash is why I use the string in between the prop guards because I tried to go through a goal post at a distance because a goal post went right in between the prop guards and cracked a propeller. This tip is don't chase a bird when your battery is low as I tried and you just can't maneuver the same. This crash proves I suck at multitasking. I was trying to fly the Phantom and run at it at the same time, and I forgot to fly the Phantom and crashed it into the hill. In this clip I'm running, so instead of filming your subject flying forwards to avoid getting prop guards in your picture, try to film your subject flying in reverse like in this clip. If you want to learn more about course lock and home lock, go ahead and follow these links. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. Go ahead and hit subscribe and like and let me know how you've crashed and if I've missed anything here or if you have any tips.